Hey, what's going on guys? Root from NoShell.com here today, and we are looking at some more Python. Now, today we're going to be talking about the idea of object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is like a sort of tactic or a mindset, or you could even go to the length to call it a paradigm of the way of writing your code and your programs. Uh, usually it's kind of denoted as OOP, or at least it's just an acronym for it, so you might hear programmers and developers calling it like that. But it's just the idea of using instances or like multiple objects in your programs. Now you can think of an object like a big machine. The big machine can store information, it has these properties and these attributes that you can considered to be the variables in our case, and they have actions and processes and things that they can do that we can consider to be the, method, the methods or the functions. So now, usually you would be using object-oriented programming because you have the ability and access to create multiple instances. And instances is a single object, because object is kind of the idea or the framework or the blueprint of what you're working with. When you have multiple instances, like let's say you wanted to have like five enemies, if you were if you were programming a video game, if if you were programming a video game, you could have five enemies, and all of these enemies are one sort of enemies. Like if you're making maybe a side scroller, you could just have an enemy that starts shooting in one single direction. And since you don't have to do this like five times, you could just build a framework or a blueprint for this idea and this mindset, the this for an instance that will be able to shoot with a function in one direction. So you can create five of those just by declaring as many as you need to, maybe with a loop, or maybe just uh, supplying them different attributes, maybe a different color, maybe a different size, and that sort of thing. So, uh, let's open up idle, and let's see what we can do. Um, this might be a little hard to visualize, because I'm not going to be showing you in this tutorial the way to make them ourselves, uh, to, the way to make objects, and the way to go about object-oriented programming ourselves, because there's a lot of new keywords that I have to introduce to you, like class, like self, uh, constructor, that sort of thing. But we're going to go into those more in depth in the later tutorials, obviously. But for now, let's take a look at what Python does and the way they store data as objects. Because that's what they really do. They do store data types as objects. If we have a string, we, it's just a new variable, and we can just have it be a string. So like, this is a string. Now we have a string. We can return it, and obviously we have this as a string. Now, we get information from our objects with something that we call a dot selector. It's just like another operator, it's just like another symbol that you've seen before, but it's, it's simply a dot, it's just a period. So if we do string dot, and we're ready to do things and get things from our object. So you can see if you wait a little bit, you're going to have your auto-completion box just spring up. And this is exactly what we wanted to. If it doesn't, we can just hit control space and there we go. Now we can look through in idle all the functions and all of the uh, all the variables that we would be able to use. If we uh, let's try something here. Let's look for count. I think that's what I want to work with. Yeah, we can use count. And now you can see count is a built-in method count of string object and this is the memory address of that object so what we're gonna look at here is obviously count is going to be a method or a function so we're gonna have to call that and we can it's, it's obviously just a method of that string object and in this case it's string we don't even have to be using this variable though we can just use a completely different uh, setup let's say string is this and obviously, that's not set up as anything as a variable, but we can still call these things with it because that data type is an object. So let's try. Let's try string.count. Now, count is a function that will look for a substring or something that is inside that string, and it will display how many of those that it finds. So let's say is it should find two of them because it found this, the is that's inside this, and then the is that's immediately after it. So there you go. But that's just sort of a really simple idea because you're able to get information, you can run functions um, inside your objects and that sort of thing. But since this is a little bit more abstract because you're just looking at it without visualizing it and making one of your own objects, this is the way that I want to introduce it to you though, because Python stores their objects, stores their data as objects, 
we can do so much more. Let's try an int. Let's just say integer equals 4. So I wonder if we have any functions we can run with the integer. Yeah, we have all of these. And let's see what they do. Integer real, so the real form of the integer. I'm thinking. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. If you use the dot selector, you can see what you can do with this object. But that's all I've got for you in this tutorial. Um, we have a lot more to cover. There's definitely a lot to talk about in this sort of uh, object-oriented programming world. It's probably going to become a mini-series just because there's just so much out there and so much that I'm able to talk about with you guys. But just understand the idea of uh, attributes and properties that you can think of as variables, and then the actions and the processes that you can think of as functions. But hey, uh, uh, I hope to be seeing you guys in the next tutorial. It'd be cool if you could give me a like, maybe a favorite, maybe subscribe, I don't know, that's your doing. But uh, have a great day.